Well, welcome everybody to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Sedona, Arizona. Sending you lots of love and light to you from this powerful, majestic place that I consider to be my home. At least it's my spiritual home. Um, lots of energy here. It's, it's a very exquisite um, place that exists. I don't know if it's on the planet Earth or it's a shift in your consciousness because sometimes when I drive to Sedona, Arizona um, and I get here, I don't always feel like I've sh driven the land or I shifted, I went, uh, it was a change of a geographical place on the map. Sometimes I'm wondering if I traveled in my psyche so, and how can you tell the difference that you're traveling in your psyche or you're traveling on land? Which one is true? When you travel, do you actually physically get in a car or a plane and change a location on the planet? or you are traveling in your consciousness. So for me, a lot of times it happens when I do come to Sedona, Arizona, this place, I don't know if it does exist on planet Earth. Where a few places I've been on the planet. Um, so I don't know the difference, you understand? So, but I leave it like that. It's just a question. Uh, and sometimes you can ask yourself, how do you know? How do you know which is which? All right, so I'm gonna come up with a topic of the discussion of this week. Why don't we do a meditation first and let me see what really wants to come out without our forcing it. Um, we were talking about, I don't exactly remember the topic of last week, but it was connected to the fifth dimension and it was connected to the shift. And uh, uh, maybe somebody rem remembers. Amir, maybe you remember, what was the topic of last week? If you can look it up and let me know after the meditation, it would be wonderful. Or write it to me on the chat box. Are you there, Amir? Anyway, okay, cool. So <laughs> let's take a deep breath and relax into this moment. And let's remember one thing that this is the only moment you have. So this is it. This, this is your moment. This is the only moment you have. So let's just be 100% into it and dive in this moment. Since it's your only moment that exists, of course, you can start going into your mind and go to other places in your mind. So we call it you're not present. That's an option you have. And you've, we all have done that many, many times in our lives. Or as an alternative to check out and not be fully consciously be present. Your alternative is to fall into the world of the mind and let the mind take you wherever it takes you which is still happening in this moment because there is no other moment. So what we do is we consciously shift our attention from our five of senses, whether we're visually seeing something, 
we're smelling something, we're hearing noises, there's some sensations in your body, you're shifting your attention. You're taking your attention away and you're bringing your attention inwards. The shift is happening and the attention is going towards that place inside you which is very still, silent, and it's the observer, the watcher, the Atman, the Atma, the one which is aware, the one which is observing the one that is always here. Bring your attention in that direction. So you're simply disconnecting from the utter world and bringing your attention to the inner world, to yourself, the one that is here right now.
take advantage of this opportunity of the collective energy field is created here. We're all connecting our hearts and our psyches into this field, which is created here. And we drop into it and we sink into silence. We go beyond the mind.
Slowly, slowly come back. It's 
slowly, slowly come back. You're constantly having this feeling that you are deciding what to do with your life, what you're doing, it's your choice. And basically you wake up every day, follow some kind of routine that you have. And you have this sense that you're the one who's deciding what to do. You're choosing for yourself. So that sense, it creates this notion that you're separated from the whole, that you are an individual, a person capable of making your own choices and you're in control of your own destiny. That's a feeling you have. So then things don't go your way because you're in charge, you're powerful, you're the almighty one. You have this sense that you're the creator of your own life however things don't go your way and you're wondering sometimes why so you look for ways, techniques, methods of how you can manipulate things so they can go your way, including how you can manipulate the people around you so they would do what you want them to do. So again, it's the same story. You, you're not aware of it a lot of times. You're not aware that you're trying to manipulate people around you. And you're not aware that you're trying to manipulate circumstances to go around you because the awareness is not there. You're just a program and the program keeps doing what it does. It's kind of like a robotic reaction. And you never question that there's, for most people, there's not a moment of questioning that maybe I am not in control 
of anything. And something else is running through me. Something else is controlling me. You never question. Most people on the planet never question that. So the first thing I want you to do and pay attention to is, is the most simple thing possible is if you are in control, you're calling the shots, then why throughout the day, you may be feeling tired you may be depressed, you may not be in a mood, you are not motivated to do certain things. You, you go through mood swings, you have anxiety, you may get afraid, you're really bored with life, you're bored with yourself, so why can't you control these emotions, these thoughts, and why can't you control your body, your energy level? Why aren't you control of any of it? You're in control of your life. You're the one who calls the shots. So, but pay attention like throughout the day, how much of your activities, your decisions, the moves you make, the things you do is based on how your body is feeling. So if one day you just feel tired all day, is that the day that you're going to start a project? Let's say you, you say, I'm in control of my life. I'm the one who calls the shots. I have free will. I've taken all of these spiritual courses and I'm working on myself right now to build this up inside me. But okay, just I want you to pay attention that throughout day-to-day -day life, the actions, the stuff you do is based on how your body is feeling, your energy level. Now, if you are working for someone else, you have a job and you have to go to work. I'm not talking about COVID-19 time. I'm talking about the old days. So you have to go to the office and you wake up in the morning and you feel really tired for no reason and your body's not into it, but you have to force yourself to go to work. So you drag yourself to work because you don't want to lose your job and you just go through the motions and you hate it. And you somehow end up finishing it and then you come home, you don't go to the gym, you don't exercise, you don't have the energy to call your friends, family to talk on the phone, which normally you do. You just wanna go home and rest. So how much control did you have on this day? How did you manipulate it? How did you design it? And then the next day, maybe the same thing. Let's go, you, let's say you go through a period in your life that you're out of school or like now, and there's not much going on. You don't have anything to do and you're tired a lot. You don't have any energy. In your mind, you want to do all these creative projects, but your body's not doing it. You don't have the energy to do it. So how much are you in control? How come you can't do it? How come you can't 
command yourself into doing a project? Why don't you have the energy? Why aren't you in a mood? Why isn't it happening for you? You're the one who calls the shots. You're in control. Have you ever thought about that? Do you ever examine that? Do you examine that how much of events of life is going your way? And it's according, it's going according to the way you want it. Do you ever look at that? Or do you live 60, 70 years old from the time you were born to the time you die, 80 years old, never questioning this ever? Because the herd, the general, the population, the 7 billion people, they're all going in this direction. Everybody's is going in that direction. Everybody believes that there are a person, there are a separate entity, there's an individual here. They're all being told the whole, st the same story. That you have your own free will, you can create your own future, you can decide what to do. You were born, when you're born, wherever you're landing. So let's say you're landing, you were born in Norway. So you land in, or you were born in Morocco, or you were born in South America, in Costa Rica. Wherever you're born, first thing they do is they're gonna attach a label on your forehead that you're a Norwegian, you're American, you are from Costa Rica, you're from Morocco. They put a label on you. And then they give you a name and a last name. So you have your nationality that was chosen for you, you didn't choose it. They given you your name and your last name. You had nothing to say. You can't choose. Okay. It's implemented. Then they give you a religion. So that's your religion. So you got your nationality. You got your religion. You got your first name. You got your last name. Obviously, you came with either a sex, man or woman. So you entered like that. Then you have your looks, you have your body. Maybe you came with some defective, defection, something's wrong, maybe not. So how much of these things do you choose? Where did you choose these things? Now you're living your life. Throughout your life, you're striving for better. You're striving to, you have some goals. Now it depends that when they let you out of the gate, you know the horse has run out of the gate, what kind of start did you have? The first 20 years in your life, how did you start? Now, let's say you're in a very loving, supportive family and there's money and you are supported, you're not physically abused, you're not sexually abused, your dad, your mom are balanced. They don't beat you up. They don't rape you. They don't kick you out of the house. You don't see any traumatic events happen in your house. People are not beating each other up. 
They're not beating you up. You don't see anything traumatizing. So you're in a supported environment. There is love, there is encouragement. Then you go to school, you get education, your family is supportive of you, and you end up going to Harvard University or Oxford University or MIT or some very good school and you get a very good education and you are supported on that path and you end up becoming a medical doctor or you end up being an attorney, an engineer, a scientist, an actor, actress, but you're supported. So when you come out of the gate, the first 20 years that you're out of the gate, you are supported, you're on the right path. So that kind of sets the tone for the rest of your life. So how much of that did you choose? Versus being on this situation that you start, parents are abusive, or father halfway through leaves, he disappears, he got your mom pregnant. After a couple of years, few years, he bailed, he ran away, so he doesn't exist. Your mom is an alcoholic or she's drug addict and da 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 da. She dies when you're nine years old. You end up being with foster parents. From one shelter home to another, you run away from home when you're 15. You get pregnant when you're 17. You never finish school. You're bewildered, you're always broke. You got a lot of stuff to work on. How much did, that, did you choose? What part of it was your choice? Tell me that. How does your feel free will come in here? You created that. If you did that, you did a real shitty job because you don't know how to create things. You have to go back to school and learn that. Pay attention to bring the awareness here. Throughout the day, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, see how you are behaving. You are ruled by how your body feels. If your body is not feeling well, then that day you're not going to do much. If you're not feeling well for a month or two, those two months you're not going to be doing much. So how does this free will kick in? I'm not going to talk a lot today. I kind of want to go slow. I want you to take your time and sit with this energy and your mind is going to come and it's going to throw tantrum. Like, where is he going? What is he saying? Okay, get on with it. I'm bored. I want to leave. Look at your daily life and see during the day you're living this life, how you're making your decisions and based on what you're making these decisions, where do they come from? Where is the source of it? A thought comes, an inspiration comes, 
that I want to do this or I want to do that. So where is, where is the source of it? Where does this thought come that motivates you to do something? Where was the source of the thought, the inspiration, the feeling, the intuitive knowing? Who created that? That you're acting upon that. Where does that come from? Did you manufact manufacture that thought? So it comes to a point that you begin to seriously question this, if you're lucky for any of us to get to that point, or we come across literature, teachers, uh, spiritual teachers, that we begin to examine this part to really, am I, an instrument that this instrument is reacting to the body sensations. So however the body feels, then I, I roll with it and I do it. So I'm kind of a victim of this body because when this body is not feeling good and it doesn't want to do things, I, there's nothing I can do. I have to obey it. I mean, I can stimulate it with coffee, with drugs, with alcohol to push it to do things. But when it doesn't want to do things, there's not much I can do about it. So part of my success in this life is if this body wants to cooperate, if it has the energy to do it, if it's got the looks to do it, if it has the parts to do it. When your body says yes, it's got all the energy and it's got everything's working, you feel, you know, the feeling's good, the energy's there, then you accomplish things or you do things. But if it doesn't have it, well, how can you do it? How do you do it? You want to start the engine. You want to get going. You say, okay, let's get up and let's do it. But then you don't, you can't start. Do you ever think about that? or your emotions, your feelings. Can you manufacture them? Can you manipulate them? Can you make yourself feel good all the time? Wouldn't you want to get up every morning and feel really good? Physically, emotionally, feeling really charged up, feeling like you're the creator of the world and you're going to conquer and take over the whole world and you feel that every day you're positive you don't feel sick you feel strong you want to go for it would you like to feel that way every day you're in control of your own life right you're the one who calls the shot why don't you make yourself why haven't you figured that out how old are you how many years have you lived here? How come by now you don't know how to manipulate your body, your mind, and be in control of yourself? How come you haven't learned that yet? You've been around all these years and you've taken these courses and you've gone to school and college and you got all the people around you and you have all the books around you. Why can't you do it? What's wrong with you? 
To me, you don't look stupid. You don't look dumb. You, you look very smart. Why can't you do what you want to do? Why aren't you what you want to be? Why didn't you conquer the world? Why are you in this situation still that you're seeking, you're looking? It's been a lot of years. So why are you in this position? Have you ever questioned yourself that? Don't take me wrong. I'm not trying to put you down or make you feel bad. I want you to question this reality, really examining it before you put your teacher's clothing on and you go out there and start teaching to other people on Instagram or on Facebook and become a guru or a teacher or a spiritual teacher that you're very well capable of being, but not teaching the wrong thing, not coming from a wounded place, not being the wounded healer or wounded teacher because you haven't figured it out yourself yet. I want you to teach that from direct experience. Directly, it's coming from your own every moment experience of life. Maybe you're looking in the wrong place for your answers. Maybe you're not in control. Maybe you were never in control. Maybe everything was written for you from the day you were born to this life. You entered into this body and living this life. You forgot your memory when you first came in. Everything got blanked out. And then you got programmed that you are an individual separated from everything and you have your own free will. And now you have to fight all of your life to reach oneness. So how about if you were never, you're never an individual and you never had a free will. And you never have to fight to reach the oneness because you are born as the oneness. You are already the one. You're in oneness with life. You're not separated. And everything is being done through you and to you is what life is doing it. Life wants you to be exactly the way you are. The only thing is that you're programmed to believe that you have to be something else. And that's where the problem is. Maybe there is no problem. If you're lazy, that's exactly how life wants to be. Your body has no motivation. You're lazy. You're tired, you want to lounge around, you want to go to the beach, you want to take it easy, you want to watch a lot of movies, you like to write poetic stories, romantic stories, life story, whatever it is. And you're perfectly fine the way you are, there's nothing wrong with you. You shouldn't be anything else. Because life, existence, is expressing itself through you, with your looks, with your body, with your limitations, with your intelligence, 
you're perfect the way you are. With all the mistakes you've made, you didn't make those mistakes. It was life experiencing itself through you. Life wanted you to be born in Norway. Life wanted you to be a woman. Life wants you to have this name, this religion, blah, blah, blah. You can change it if you want. You can change your name. You can change your religion or get rid of it. You don't have to identify with your nationality. You can use your passport, but not feel identified to it. Isn't that easier? I found it such a relief that when this revelation took place, this realization came, when I realized that, wow, I am absolutely not in control of anything in this world, and I'm not running the show, I'm not even running this body. This body and this mind, this mechanism, this unit has its own predetermined programming. It's already predetermined. It was programmed, it's programmed to do whatever in this life it's supposed to do from the beginning to the end. Its point of being born is writ, it's written, the point is gonna die. It will live this long from here to there. And everything that this body does is already determined, predetermined. It cannot be anything else exactly the way it's meant to be. How does that for your mind? Your mind is going to come and say, what are you talking about? Your mind will come and say, what do you mean? I don't have free will. I can't choose. Look at me. I'm so powerful. I'm so mighty. I can do whatever I want. What do you mean? I can't do anything. Well, because when you look at it that way and you come to this thing that, wait a minute, I have no free will in this life. Everything's predetermined. That means the death of the mind. That means the end of the mind because only the mind will come and say, what do you mean? I don't exist because there's a false identity that you're latching onto. That false identity is only in your mind. It's the mind that is identifying to a false identity. It's happening in your mind. It's not the world. It's in your mind, which is in the wrong place. That's the source of your suffering. That's the source of your confusion. And yet, it's so obvious and it's so clearly there that majority of human beings on the planet are missing it. They go through the entire life and completely missing it. Completely missing the entire thing.
tell yourself for one moment, I want you to examine this. Let's do it together. Let's do this practice. Tell yourself, I have no free will and I'm not in charge of my life. I'm not even my own responsibility. It's life created me and life is in charge of feeding me. Life has to feed me because I have no free will. Sorry, there's a helicopter flying by. You have no free will and you have nothing to do with this life. And anything that happens through you is exactly what life wants to do. It's God's wish. Life is doing it. Existence is acting through you and make you think you're the one who chooses this. So let's play this game for a moment. Tell yourself that I don't exist as a separate entity. I'm a part of existence and existence is choosing through me. I have no free will, zero. I can't make any decision. None of my decisions are mine. Say that to yourself and see how your mind is going to respond to you. See the answer. Check it out. Do it right now. And look and see how your mind is going to respond. that you as a separated being, separated entity as a person with your own free will, capable of making your own decisions, do not exist. It doesn't exist. And see what your mind is gonna do. Your mind is gonna come very strongly and says, what do you mean? What do you mean I don't exist? What do you mean I don't have free will? What do you mean I can't do this or not? Thoughts gonna come for you in like bombardment, coming up with all kinds of excuses and reasoning because if you merge into the oneness, it's the death of the mind. It's the death of your ego. The mind has to die. It's the end of it. Because that means the mind doesn't exist. Because you have to be a separated entity with your own free will in order to have a mind. Because what is your mind? It's a bundle of thoughts. What is your ego? It's just thoughts. What is your identity? You. What are you? You're created out of a bunch of thoughts. That's all there is to you. Take your thoughts away and next week at the Ascension to Fifth Dimension Workshop, I'm going to give you these tools because we have time. We have two, four hours and we have time so I can walk you through these corridors with tools and exercises to bring you into this place. So 
which I don't have time to do it here. But who are you? Ask yourself this question. Who am I if I am not thinking? Please, I beg you, pay attention. Do this. It's important. It's important for you. Who are you if you're not thinking? If there's no thoughts in your mind, what is your definition of yourself? Then who are you? then how do you define yourself if there are no thoughts? Anybody, can anybody tell me this? Can you introduce yourself and tell me who you are if you have no thoughts? Zero. What is your identity? Show me your identity. Who are you if you don't think? If it's, if your mind is completely quiet. I'm not talking about if you're a stupor. Don't take me wrong. I'm not talking about a zombie walking around completely. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that you're empty, you have no thoughts, you're here, you're present 100%, but there are no thoughts in your mind. You don't have, you wake up from the moment you wake up in the morning till the time you go to bed, you have no thoughts. It's quiet inside you. Then how do you define yourself? And this is something that most human beings go through a complete life cycle over and over. They grow up, they go to school, they get married, they have children, they age, they grow old, they have grandkids and they die. And yet, they never ever question that. And then the cycle keeps repeating itself. Why? Because everything is happening in the realms of thoughts. So it's all the mind creating whatever it's creating, the illusion. So when the person is dying, they get sucked back into this life again because it's a world of thoughts. It's repeating itself. It recreates itself in the world, the realms of thoughts. And since only it's thoughts, it can't stay the same. It cannot sustain its structural, structural integrity. It can't sustain itself. It can't stay the same. So what happens? When something cannot stay the same, what happens to it? It changes to something else. So it's always changing from one thing to another. So since it's always changing from one thing to another, 
you're trying to hang on to it. You're trying to hang on to a permanent situation, a permanent relationship, a permanent marriage, perfect marriage, a permanent work relationship, business, children. You're trying to hang on to something, especially when it's good, you want to keep it good in that way and you do whatever you, you can, but then what happens? It falls apart eventually. Oh my God, I had a perfect marriage for what? 10, 15 years. It was perfect. What happened after? Well, the kids grew up and they left and him and I, we grew apart. So finally it ends and it changes to something else. No matter how hard you're trying, you can't make it. because you are operating as an individual. I wrote it in my book, uh, Lightning Notes of Zarathustra. It says, no matter how fast, how slick, how quick you're moving as an individual, you're always on the palm of the one who moves as a field. The one that moves as a field always has an advantage over the one who moves as an individual. Imagine you're running on, on a football field and you're very fast. So you can get from one end of the football field to the other in just seconds. You're the fastest ever existed. So you're, you're running on this field. You're running from here to here. So no matter how fast you're running, the one who's moving as a field moves up. So you're always running on the field. The one who moves as a field has complete advantage on the one who moves as an individual. So that's where the shift comes, that the awareness, the consciousness, the expansions, this explosion that starts to happen to you, it's happening right now for some of you who really feel connected to this teaching, to this particular teaching, and you're really connected to it and you're following it. And you're kind of giving up or losing your resistance to it. So your mind is bending, you're bending it, you're opening up something's greater inside of you is taking over the force the love the heart is taking over you and it's shifting your consciousness as we're speaking right now so there's an opening you're willing to at least look at it you're not maybe following it you're not listening following blindly or you're, you're, you're open, you're like, okay, what if I don't exist as a separate individual? What if everything I've learned up to now is wrong? This is not it. What if this man Zarathustra, what if he's right? Why don't I give this a try? See what happens. So what if I don't have free will? Let's examine that part. Let's examine the advantages of not having free will. 
So the mind, so you went beyond the mind. The mind is going crazy. It's throwing all these things at you to stop you from doing it. And now you're going beyond the mind. And now you're examining it. Okay, you don't have free will. Nothing, zero. So whose will is this? It's the existence, it's the oneness. God is operating through you. Okay, so Zarathustra, how am I gonna pay my bills? How am I gonna take care of my kids? How am I gonna eat? How am I gonna pay my rent? How am I gonna pay my car mortgage? Well, you are not responsible. So who brought you to this life? Who's carrying you? Who's feeding you? Who's giving you air to breathe? Who's giving you water to drink? That one is responsible for your well-being. Can you let go in that? Can you sit back? Can you just relax into that? Because you're, oh, 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 I don't have free will. What's going to happen to me? Oh. So can you just take a deep breath and oh, relax into it? And looking at it from that point of view. There is a force here that created the existence. Before you were born, who was running this world? Who's been responsible for the creation, for millions, billions of people that were born, came to this life before you were born? Who was in control of them? Who was responsible for them? Who brought them to this world? 2,000 years ago, when man existed, they didn't have a dentist, they didn't have doctors. If you broke your leg, you had to live with it all of your life. Your teeth would fall and decay. If you had a headache, you had no aspirins for it. 2,000 years ago, who managed life that carried humanity slowly 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 to this point who's been responsible for it who fed all of these people who taught them how to do agriculture how to hunt something taught these people some information intelligence was handling it Who's responsible for you when you sleep? You sleep the eight hours that you're sleeping. Who's doing your physical functioning? Who's pumping your heart? Who's delivering oxygen to the cells? Who's working on your digestion? Who's in control of your brain activities? Who's in control of your sleep pattern when you're sleeping who's running the world who's turning the night today and the day tonight are you in control of that are you doing that when you're sleeping are you in control of all these operations Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever questioned that? If I don't have free will, which I don't, thank God, then I'm one with that. I'm one with God. I'm one with existence. Existence has brought me into this life. Existence is responsible for my education, for my well-being, for my shelter, for food, for money, 
for transportation, for my education, that which has brought me into this world is responsible for all of these things. And I can relax into that. And that same thing reveals itself in my heart because now I'm not dealing with the mind. So there is no duality. I don't have to deal with this mind process. So I can relax into here because life is going to do whatever it wants to do and I'm not afraid because I'm completely protected by that which brought me into this life and is going to carry me if I'm supposed to fall in love with someone and have a long-term long relationship, the same force will put me together. How many times you try to hook up with somebody? How much of your time you spend trying to find your love, your partner? You're trying to manifest it and it doesn't happen. It's not happening. Or it's happening, and when it's happening, it's short term, and then it dis disappears. Well, you just relax. You relax into the being that you are, into this. And as you're relaxing into this, revelation happens. The invisible mystical source of life that's operating through you begins to reveal itself. It shows itself to you. And you start to see, wow, this infinite intelligence operating and it's operating through me and everyone else and it's showing itself it's showing its power it's showing its grace to you and then you start to see the flow of life how things come and how things go and you begin to be really centered and one-pointedness because as this thing's turning around you, it's like it's turning. You're in the center of it and everything is turning around you. Everything is turning and you're not invested on these things that are coming and going. You're not so much hanging out on things come and go. because they're temporarily and they're not, there is no permanence to them because you're the only one who becomes permanent because you're not a person, you are that. So you're centered here. You're not moving. And everything is moving, you begin to see it's not real because then you are the only real thing. That which doesn't come and that which doesn't go. And that's I am. Everything else appears and disappears. You begin to see it's not real. The only way you're going to, to realize that this world, including this body, this mind, none of them real and none of them really exist. The only way, it's not a mental agreement, mental understanding. You have to understand it yourself as a realization, not by mentally 
brainwashing yourself and repeating it like a parrot. You have to recognize that. The only way you can recognize that this world is not real, so then you're not even, you're not considering it and you're not afraid of it anymore and you become free from it, is by recognizing that which inside yourself which never changes. So you have brought your attention on that which doesn't change. And the more you connect to it, the more you recognize that which doesn't change, then everything else that's changing begins to show you that it's an illusion, it's not real. Anything that is changing means the entire world, everyone, everything, everything you see, everything you touch, everything you're in contact with is not real. Therefore, you don't need to be afraid of it. Including your identity. Your identity is not real either. So the more your attention go goes towards that which does not change, that which is permanently here is always still like this ah uh, like that look at this this look at the intensity look at the connection of that moment that is here but is absolutely still and silent is not moving go to that place connect to that part of yourself Go back into your silence. Bring your attention towards the mountain inside you, the stillness. Become still. This is stillness, not moving and real, and it's observing anything that's moving. The more you connect to that part, the more you begin to see the Maya, and the more the Maya begins to lose its grip. And the more you get established into the self, into the oneness, that you are already. And the mind starts to dissipate. And you spend more and more time being quiet. You recognize yourself more and more throughout the day that you're really at peace with yourself. It's very quiet. You're not ruled by the anxieties and the thoughts. And if something arises and comes out, you simply are aware of it. Okay, does anybody have any questions? You can either wave at me or write something in the chat box. And I'll be happy to answer it.
Hi, Anita. You have to unmute yourself. So I'm unmuting you. You have to. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Yes. Um. Uh, what I uh, I want to refer what you told before. You told we don't have a free will and um, everything is done for us. That means God is taking the decisions, not we. And uh, he's looking after us. This was the topic from last time also. Um, what I like to know is uh, so many people die from hunger or from deep sicknesses, diseases. I don't know what. And uh, I have another special question, you know. Uh, we killed here uh, six million of Jewish people in Germany. Uh, right. did, did, who cared for the people who looked after these people? You know, I can't come along with this problem. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Great. So, so what is the main question? Uh, yeah, the last one, what I, uh, what I, um, asked. okay. Yes, right. I like to know this, yeah. Right. Okay. So, if nobody's in control, right? So that means if there is no individual entity being, being around, so it's all God. So these six million people who died, in Holocaust, who were they? If it's only God, the six million who died were God, and the people who killed them were God too. So did anything happen? God manifested itself as these the Nazi agents, and God manifested itself as the six million Jews. So, God as the Nazi agents, God as the Jews. So, he, so God kills itself. So, at the end, what happens? nothing happens because nobody died it was the same one pretending to be the aggressor it was the same one who was being murdered so the aggressor and the one who's getting the victim are both the same they're both the same There is no separation. Both of them, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, what, what, is a, what is about this uh, misery happens to, uh, to the people and to their children? Right. Right. So there was, right. okay, so there was misery that happened, correct? And what is the opposite of the misery? Anita. Um, love or? I don't know. What's opposite of misery? It's joy, it's satisfaction, it's happiness, it's right, right? Mm -hmm. so, so let's say that somebody is murdering somebody, right? It's hypothetical, okay? Let's not get upset about it, all right? <clears throat> Are you with me? Yes, yes. Okay, so when someone's enjoying killing somebody and they're getting joy out of it, so there is joy and there is misery. Yeah. So when the Nazis were burning the Jews, who was enjoying it? The Nazis were enjoying it, correct? Yeah. So there was God experiencing joy, and then the ones who were burning, there was God experiencing misery. 
So God was experiencing both sides simultaneously being both sides. Experiencing, experiencing. God wants to experience. Why? Because God is infinite. And it's got infinity time to be here. It's been here ever since the ever since. So it's bored. It wants to have some fun. So what does it do? It creates this world. This is not the only world God has created or it's existing right now. Let's not get really excited about it and become very possessive of this world. It's the infinite. It's imagining this world. It can imagine thousands of worlds and experiences simultaneously. And is there no guilt also? No what? Guilt. Guilt. No, because... Did you, when you were seven, eight years old, did you play nurse and doctor? Did you play any kind of? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Huh? Yes, yes. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, if when somebody died in your imagination, in your game, did you feel guilty? Mm. We didn't play dying, we just experienced body or, or something play, like this. Play a game in your mind, play a game right now. Mm -hmm. And in this game, someone dies and some people live. And see if you feel guilty. Do it right now. Yes, okay. If it's a game, no, I don't feel guilty. It is a game. This but, whole thing is a game. Yeah. But people yeah. won't consider it, it as a game if uh, uh, six million of people were killed. Yeah, of course, because they're not supposed to. Because they're supposed to remain into the game and come back and do another round of this mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. This is God's will. If God wanted you and wanted the entire world to awaken, then there is no more game. It's finished. The game only exists as long as you believe it. As long as you believe you're in a game, so it's real. If you realize it, that, that it's not real, then it's over. It won't happen. Oh. However, within the game of God, that is enjoying duality. God creates the duality, the opposites. And one cannot exist without the other one. Okay? Let's get this really straight for all of you. You can't have the good stuff in this life without the misery. You cannot have it. all the good feelings and good stuff you want to experience, the opposite of it must be experienced in this world, whether you experience it or someone else experience it. They can't exist. They come together. So the idea of having a perfect world, it's great. But it just won't happen. It can happen for a few moments, but that's it. Hi, Eva. I am trying. Okay, good. Well, I can follow your thinking, and I my mind has has no objections. Still, I wonder if God, God, God or life is bored by 
only living in love and peace, why should we go against God's will? Okay, I didn't quite understand. I'm sorry. Say that okay. again. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, God has been bored. Bored is is not funny. Only to live in love and peace. You, you don't get it. I, I'm not hearing you. It's not that uh, I don't okay. understand. It. Am I on your screen? Okay, I can write it instead. I write it instead. You can't hear. You can't hear. I can hear you right now. Just stay where you're at. Okay. God has decided to the game like you described. It. Okay. To to experience both good and bad and right. Uh, why shall we go against his will to experience all the bad things and the good things? Yeah, you because your your method. Right, mm -hmm. because you don't have a choice. You you have no say here in this world. Uh, as I understand, it, that's that's uh, the only thing about the free will is. That you think we have a free will if we make your tools and if we go within ourselves and right. experience love and 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 right. peace. No, so you, that, even, that's a choice. Even that is not a choice. Uh, explain that something more about it. Yeah, it's God's will that you're here on this platform that you're hearing what I have to say. Okay. And it's God's will that you will go inwards and connect with the stillness. You have nothing to say in this transaction. Okay, great. I'm satisfied with your answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. You and I have zero to say. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah. So, when I was sitting at the feet of Master Punjaji, and there was 150 of us, I was consider myself a boy and ignorant and I had no idea who I have come across. I had no idea I was sitting at the presence of a Yanni. I had no idea I was sitting at the presence of the Buddha. I had no idea I was sitting at the presence of the Jesus Christ or Christ con consciousness. I had no idea that this is Her Majesty, the Supreme Creator of the world, is speaking to me in a human form. I didn't know that. And Papaji used to say every once in a while that you didn't come here on your own free will. You didn't walk up here to the satsang we brought you here. We invited you here. You were brought here. So, existence, God, every once in a while, picks up, cherry picks, a few, not very many, and bringing them to awakening. 
So you're being directed home. It's a rare event. It doesn't happen very often. So don't take these moments for granted. A, they're not going to be here all the time. Even though this seems like to be a consistency in the academy or the teachings, there's no guarantee it will be here tomorrow. There's no guarantee that I will be alive next week and be able to teach you. There's no guarantee that this will happen ever again. It's a one-time deal. Even though it looks consistent, it's a one-time invitation that you will be directed home to become free from the cycle. She invites you and she brings you in and she chooses if you should awaken to yourself. You never choose that. So Papaji used to tell us that it's the grace. It's the grace. And I got to see it on five near-death experiences that it was the grace that took me by the very edge of death and brought me out of it on its own. It's only the grace. Self-realization and a complete God-realization only happens based on the will of God. That one chooses you for you to be led home. Otherwise, your attention is on the world and the world is very real and you're going to remain engaged with the world including your mind and your emotions, and you remain into the cycle. You, won't, you will self-improve, but you never become free. I'm sorry, that's how it is. I didn't, I didn't make it. I'm just another character in this Lila that happened to show up. I don't have any independence of myself. I'm only an image, a character, an agent, a channel that God comes and talks through it. God comes and does healing through it. God comes and does transmission through it. And I don't know why it chose this one, it did. For how long? I don't know. But as far as I know, if you want freedom, then you're going to have to disengage from the world disengage from it and come inside and re-engage with that which inside you that doesn't move. And when you do that, you become free. I didn't realize it's almost 12 uh, p.m.
p.m. I thank you for joining me. Um, enjoyed being at your presence, sharing the love and these moments together. Precious, precious moments, these moments of life right now. What an honor for me to be here at your presence and having these moments together. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. I look forward to seeing you. I welcome you with all my heart. Uh, followed by on Thursday, the 23rd of July, we're having a shamanic healing circle for two hours. And then on a weekend, next weekend, on the 25th and 26th of July, we're having a workshop regarding ascension to fifth dimension. And I'm going to be working with you and helping you to discover your way home and how you can raise your vibrations to a much higher frequency so you can raise above this world and world's issues, worries, fears, and traumas. So you can be in this place but not be affected by it and become free. I also designed a program called Life Training Program. It's a one-on-one -on -one VIP training program for those who are interested in investing into themselves. If you have a desire to invest, it is an investment in yourself and you want to walk the path with me, then it would take us three to four months of every week we get together for an hour and a half and we go through different various of stages of helping you tailor make a program that helps you get over all of your blockages that are holding you back and leading you into your highest level of consciousness and love. And I will be helping you how to do that. Uh, I started doing it in March. So far we had 100% success. The program has gone very, very well beyond what I was expecting. So, and the reason I can do this is because right now I'm not touring. So I have time to work on you one-on-one. -on -one. So feel free to reach out to me about the program, the time, the price and everything. Write an email to me. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. Info at zaratustra.tv. And my website is zaratustra.tv. So feel free to reach out and I'll be more than welcome, uh, happy to make a private appointment with you and we go, uh, we do some consultation. Thank you for your time, sending you lots of love and light. God bless you and I'll see you next week. Namaste.